video, right? They have their own, you know, these are their parties, like a disco. They have a circle in the middle, people dancing, jumping around, you know, like monkeys going around, and he's the maestro, you know, going like this and up and down. Allah, Allah. This is Sheikh Nazi. He said, uh, he said, if these Wahhabis, you know, tell these Wahhabis, what is the name of the tower? Evil, evil tower? They told him, evil tower. Evil tower? I will go to the evil tower and tell God, throw me if I am wrong. You know, some, some, some nonsense, man. By the way, he hates the Wahhabis. He has a huge propaganda against them. Shame on a man this old has huge followers. They call him the living saint. He's like the living saint. No, no doubt, no knowledge, no nothing. Nothing, nothing to offer the people, except that he misleads the masses of Muslims. And you read the comments. MashaAllah, beautiful song. <laughs> That's Islam, beautiful song. Nice dancing, you know, for the, for the events that they have. That's Sheikh Nazim for you and Kabbani and all these, you know, all these group of people. This is what they're upon. This is what they're upon. Walil Asaf Shadid. And, and the worst part is that they come and they turn their fingers against the people who love the Sunnah and love Allah Azza wa Jal more than anything else in the world. And they give us names so they can scare the people away. So under the, under the, the slogan of Wahhabism, now you tell any Muslim, from the Middle East or the subcontinent, this hadith is da'if. All you have to do is say this hadith is da'if. Today, what is today? The 15th of Sha'ban. Just tell any Muslim who's among those, today the hadith about this da'if, ala tool you become a Wahhabi. Now he's been programmed, be careful man, be careful of these Wahhabis. Anything you hear from them is no good. So you can swear by Allah and show him the hadith da'if, he will not believe you. You see why it's dangerous? Why is it dangerous? Because the average people believe it. It doesn't matter that they call us Wahhabis. The problem is when now you try to give da'wah to the people and you simply call them to Tawheed and Sunnah and they start sensing it, they have a sensor. Say, okay, going up, boom, Wahhabi. Go, go, you know? I know, don't teach me. And so how will you give da'wah? It becomes a problem. The same thing the Prophet ﷺ suffered from. Calling them names, the people don't want to hear the da'wah. But guess what? Those who have goodness in them, Allah shall guide them. As many of our brothers, alhamdulillah. They used to be on that old, you know, that old uh, disc and that old track. And Allah guided them to the truth. And we hope that others will be guided accordingly. Tayyib. Now what about building on graves? We said you cannot travel now to any place. So going to Maqam Sitna, I don't know who in some country out, out there is no good anymore. Because the Prophet ﷺ prohibited that you travel, you undergo a journey, except the three masajid. Understood? Understood. Let's say they ignored us. And they ignored the Messenger of Allah. They insisted on going there. Now they want to build a shrine. Let's see what the Prophet ﷺ said to teach these people who don't want to be taught. And the hadith is Sahih Muslim. إِنَّ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ كَانُوا يَتَّخِذُونَ الْقُبُورَ مَسَاجِدٍ أَلَا فَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا الْقُبُورَ مَسَاجِدْ فَإِنِّي أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْ ذَلِكْ And this, he alayhi salatu salam said this five days before he passed away, alayhi salatu salam. Five days. He said, Verily those who came before you used to take the grave sites of their, uh, they used to take the grave sites of their prophets, or in this hadith, he, they used to take the grave sites as places of worship. As places of worship. Nay, verily I say to you, do not take the grave sites as places of worship. فَإِنِّي أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْ ذلك I prevent you, I prohibit you from doing that. Look at the emphasis. First he told us what they did, and we have been taught that what? We don't follow the ways of the disbelievers. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. First he mentioned them. So that's the first warning. Secondly, he told us what they used to do. Don't, do not, do not take them, I forbid you from doing that. So you see the emphasis? And they still do it. He said in another hadith, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَىٰ اتَّخَذُوا قُبُورَ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ مَسَاجِدٍ 
muttafaqun alay in Bukhari and Muslim. May Allah curse the Jews and the Christians. Or Allah has already cursed the Jews and the Christians. They have taken the grave sites of their prophets as places of worship. Isn't that what they're doing in the Masjid al Nabawi today, some Muslims? Exactly. He must pray near the grave, preferably towards the grave, not towards the Qibla. The, and, and this is the Prophet ﷺ. Don't ask about all the other, you know, Maulanas and all the other awliya which they came up with. People who may be innocent from the shirk. All these are being worshipped and they go and place, they, they, they build constructions over their places, over their graves. The Prophet ﷺ said in another authentic narration, إِنَّ مِنْ شِرَارِ النَّاسِ مَنْ تُدْرِكُهُمُ السَّاعَةِ وَهُمْ أَحْيَاء وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذَ الْقُبُورَ وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذُ الْقُبُورَ مَسَاجِدِ Among the most evil of people are those whom the hour will occur against them. يعني when the, when the zalzala will happen, these are the ones alive, these are the among, among the most evil of people and those who take the graves as places of worship. SubhanAllah, among the most evil of people. And you know how many Muslims are going to these graves, man. And you know what's happening. This is no secret to any Muslim in the world. It's on TV, it's on, the, you know, it's on videos, it's all over the place. There are books written about it and calling to it. Now, some may say, oh yeah? Well, what about the grave of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam? <coughs> What about that? That's in the masjid. What's your problem? Why are you praying over there? How come they did it? So what do you say? We say, listen man, you're confused. Where was the Prophet ﷺ buried? Where was he buried? In the chamber of who? Aisha. Was the chamber of Aisha in the masjid? Can his wife's chamber be in the masjid? It wasn't in the masjid. Where was it? around the masjid. The chambers were around the masjid. The place of salah had no chambers in there. Now, this is where he was. When did that change? In the Khilafah of Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik. Isn't that his name? Walid ibn Abdul Malik. During his time, when they wanted to expand the masjid, they actually built the construction to still make a partition and keep the... They didn't build it on the grave. They built a construction around it. Keeping the grave as is, as opposed to those who build the shrines on the grave, and then they expand in the measure in that direction. Wrong move, no doubt. Wrong move. But qaddar Allahu wa ma fa'al. Can we use the actions of this person as a hujjah in the deen of Allah? Does that justify us building now uh, constructions over graves? Because some man, some khalifa, at some point in time, did that erroneously? No, we cannot do so. So that is, this is, I mean, this doesn't hold any water. This is a baseless argument. No one can really dispute about that. Ibn Umar, and to further explain this, in the hadith of Ibn Umar, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, pray some of your prayers at home. Do not take them like graves. Don't make your homes like graves. What is he trying to say? That you don't pray at graves. Like the graveyard is a place that you don't pray. And we have many narrations to support that. Exception is to what? Janazah prayer. Exception is to the janazah prayer, this is a special salah for the deceased. Otherwise, he said, don't make your houses, your homes, like the graveyard. Pray some of your prayers at home. Meaning don't pray all the sunan in the masjid and have nothing at home. Because if you don't pray at home, it becomes like a what? A gravesite, a graveyard. And people don't pray in the graveyard. So this is clear. This is a clear understanding. It doesn't need a philosopher. Furthermore, he said, alayhi salam, in the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, the whole earth is a place in which to pray except graveyards and bathrooms. Clear. Everywhere in the world you can do salah 